So I can admit that I was one of those people who was sleeping on Tanache for a very long time. But this album definitely woke me up and we are about to talk about it. Who push it real good? What's up everybody, it is Royal J and I'm back again with another video and this time we are going to be talking about Tanache's 333 album, so let's go right ahead and get into it. I listened to the album at work, that was the first time I listened to it, I was playing it in my ear while I was just vibing out at work. I fell in love with it. Then I listened to it again at the gym and I fell more in love with it. Then I listened to it at home and I was like, okay, I love this album. So I have my notes here from track by track and we're going to talk about each song on the album. I'm going to try not to make this video too long because I don't want it to be too long. I don't want it to be dragged out or stretched. We're going to start off with Let Go. Let Go is the intro to the album. It's so vibey. Like, I love that song. I wish it was longer, but it's very vibey. And I'm a person who's very big on intro. So like, to me, I feel like the intro to your album actually kind of speaks for how the rest of the album is going to be. Some people may disagree with that, but I totally feel that way. If the intro is whack, I mean, then so is the album. <laughs> period so i'm one of those people where i'm very big on intros so when the first song comes on i'm really listening to it because i'm just like okay if this is good then i know the rest of the album is going to be good but if this is bad then the rest of the album is bad now if you're one of those artists who like cheats and maybe do some talking or something on the intro instead of a song then yeah you probably can't determine it that way but yeah i love it it's very vibey i wish it was longer it kind of made you feel like you was in another dimension or something like you was floating so the next song we have is i can see the future so this song tanache got real cocky real early in the album i like it my favorite part in the song is actually what she was saying you know he's used to the same so i gotta show him something different i could see the future and have you and i or something like that i was like okay yeah she's getting real cocky early this is the second song and we're already like getting cocky with it i was like literally okay first song is good now we're on the second song is good it was just amazing so the next song we have is x featuring jeremiah favorite it's my favorite it's been on instant repeat since i've heard it oh my like this is on my list of favorites so i play this over and over and over one thing that i can say about jeremiah is he may have some bad songs i'm not aware of him because most of the stuff that i've heard from jeremiah as far as features and even his music all are good like even his first album is amazing to me but every time I see Jeremiah's name on a song with someone else, I immediately rush to listen to it because I feel like he just provides so well. This He was the right pick for the song. He was the right pick for the song. Hopefully they make it a single and they actually do a dope video to it because it was really good. So it starts off with X marks the spot, look and you find it. Uh, of course, it's talking about sex. But it's, it's just with them two on it together. I don't know if they did any other songs with each other prior to this one. I'm not for sure. I'll probably look into it or you guys will comment below and let me know. So dope. So it, it was kind of giving you that vibe of hip hop, R&B, because both of them was kind of rapping in a way, like rap singing. I miss the era of duets. So the next song we have is Shy Guy. Um, this song, it was just like a, I think like an interlude or something. It was really, really short. It starts off with Tanache laughing and I was like, okay, does this sound like a high laugh? I think we all know what a high laugh is. It was like one of them high laughs when like, when you're on the edible or something. I was just like, girl, we high right now? We on some shrooms or something? Like, what's going on? But the beat starts playing after she laughs. Well, I assume that it's her. It sounded like her, but it could be somebody else. I don't really know. The beat starts and I was just like, okay, what's going on here? It sounded like if you are an anime watcher and you listen to the beat, it do sound like something that would be played in the anime, like an intro or maybe the ending of the anime. I was like, this is getting, giving me anime vibes. I can hear this on the intro of an anime series or something. Like, I, I can see it. <laughs> I, can, I can see it. And obviously, she's talking about a guy who is shy and, and stuff like that. So exactly what the song is titled is, is, is exactly what she's talking about. So the next song we have is Bouncing. 
Bouncing is actually, I believe is her current single that she's pushing right now, or was pushing, um, if I'm not mistaken. When I first heard the song, when the video first came out, I don't know, I wasn't really connecting with it too much, I guess because of where I was or what I was doing at that time. But I just wasn't really connected with the song. I kind of bypassed it, but it was really blowing up on Twitter. And I was like, okay, I like the video, but I'm not really connected to the song too much. When I'm listening to the album and after hearing let go and after hearing x and after hearing shy guy and, but after hearing those songs and then getting to bouncing on the album i was like okay see i like this now i like it you know i don't i don't know it's weird to me i'm one of those people where i can't look at a video first before i listen to the song because it's either going to give me two different emotions i may like the the video more than i like the song so it may cause me to not really connect with the song because of the video or i may not like the video and it will probably make me like the song or make me really really not like the song so what happened was I actually watched the clip on Twitter instead of listening to the whole thing. And that's where I kind of messed up at. So actually listening to the whole entire song without the video on the album, I was just like, okay, yeah, this is cool. And then I listened to it in, um, at the gym and I was on a treadmill and I was just like, oh, okay, I'm running on the treadmill and I'm just like, okay, yeah, this beat is really, I'm feeling the beat, I'm feeling the lyrics. It's, that's one thing. Do not look at Twitter clips, okay, of songs because it will mess up everything it's best to go and listen to it in its entirety on your own so that way you can really get the feel of it so the next song we have is unconditional which is also on my list of favorites from the beginning to the end the production just everything about this song the entire album really but with this song in particular i fell in love with it with the first listen it gave me that vibe of um the song that's on rihanna's unapologetic album i think it's called uh like the the mother mary song or something like that it, it gave me that vibe like when you listen to that song rihanna's song how it transitions and it gives you two different vibes. That's what this song gave. And I was just like, oh my God. And then it sounded like something that would have been on Unapologetic or maybe Talk That Talk. So I was like, is Tinashe channeling her Rihanna right now? Because it was really giving me that. And I love the second part a lot. I really love that second part. Even when she was harmonizing towards the end, I love that part, but I love the whole song. On my, my favorite list, it's probably number one on that list of favorites. So in the first half of the song, I love the part where she said, um, I don't understand how we set the bar so low. That could go for various of things. And I love that she said that, but we I know exactly what she was talking about. It could go for different things. But that was my, my favorite lyric in the song. I was just like, girl, you better talk about it. So the next song we have is Angels with Cash Page. I was just listening to Cash Page. I think that's how you pronounce the name, but I was just listening to her like a few weeks ago. I was listening to her parked car combos or something like that. I think that's what it's called. And I fell in love with that entire project. I didn't listen to her most recent one, but I listened to the first one because I was like, I want to start off from the very first thing and kind of work all the way up. But I fell in love with parked combos and it was just parked car combos. This song is, is really good. I, I, I like it. Them both together and their voices just mesh so well. It was like, it was kind of almost like you to me, because you know, if you guys listen to both of these artists on the regular, of course you would know the difference, but I was kind of like, okay, which one is this one? Or who, who's singing now? Or which part this is? So it was kind of like, I was a little bit confused, but it was great. It was great. So the next song we have is 333 featuring Absolutely. Ooh, this song is great. <laughs> the beat is so haunting. It's just like the rapping part was so good. I don't know, but I feel like I really want a Tanache and FKA Twig song. I really want it because this song did kind of make me feel like it's something that FKA Twigs could have been a part of. I can't get enough of the production on the album. I just cannot. But in the beginning, it's kind of like this deep, scary type voice that starts in the beginning but yeah it's like this deep haunting voice in the beginning and saying ooh and then you have the part like when she was like singing like a choir and then they started singing it was just like oh my gosh like this oh like this is it <laughs> so the next song we have is undo back to my heart 
even if you don't like the songs on this album like just get into the lyrics of the songs because it hits so deep so with this part it was just saying how like it says something in the song building something real out here is hard um i know i've been doing fine on my own but i need someone and i was like oh I was like, child, it's, these lyrics is hitting because <laughs> it, it, it fits perfectly with today with so many facades, it's kind of hard. This song to me was pop excellence. So the next song we have is Let Me Down Slowly. This song is kind of sort of sad, but it's also kind of not, but it kind of is when you think about it because it's like she's sad, but then she's also kind of saying how she can't wait to get over this person. Kind of like a moving on type song to me. So the lyrics says, I'm having fun, but I can't get over you. I'm thinking about you constantly and I can't wait to get over you. So I like, I like this song. It's not on my list of favorites, but I do like the, the message in the song and um, I don't dislike the song but it's just not on my list of favorites but it is a really good song so the next song we have is last call now this song is sad this song is sad <laughs> and it's talking about someone using you but you're not allowing it anymore it goes back like we're going back to the whole message in the song i think we've all been there at some point in our lives or some of us are going to get there if you haven't already but sometimes people come into your life and they get things from you and they want to gain from you and then it's like you allow them to but then when you wake up and realize like this isn't right and you don't allow them to use you anymore then it becomes this thing where you're the bad person and you know you're problematic so that's what i got from this song stop allowing people to use you so the chase this This is actually another song that's not really too much of my favorite. I like the whole line of like not chasing anybody. I feel like it, just let it go. Cut them off. Don't chase. Just don't be bothered. So yeah, this song wasn't my favorite. You know what I'm saying? This is probably like the only song that I can say that I probably wasn't. I want to repeat it like play it again but you know it wasn't bad but it's just i don't know it's just yeah the next song is pasadena future, uh, featuring buddy when i first heard it i felt like i was at a rave or something i felt like a rave dancer you know the people with the glow sticks and they doing like i felt like i was there so the beat was really cute and it was also anime sounding it was it was cool but i really did like buddy's verse the whole they say i'm psycho but this here is in cycles or something like that tell all my rivals save that drama for your mama like <laughs> i was like oh okay this is catchy i loved his verse he really went in and it was probably my favorite part of the song but um tanache really did her thing as well but his verse it really got me hyped i like pasadena it is on my favorites uh, uh, list and another part I also like was I try to ignore all the nonsense only I can manifest it yeah you know I'm all spiritual today so when people start talking about manifestations and stuff like that my ears like perk up and I I notice it immediately so so the next song we have is small reminders I feel like the song is about shadow work like going within, um, doing a lot of soul searching and, and stuff like that. And the message in the song was really on point. Like it was just great to me. And it was something that I needed to hear in that moment. It was just talking about not quitting and not giving up and, and standing tall and, and just keep going and not give up on anything that you're doing. So we all need that message. I love when artists actually put these types of songs on the album, like these earthy type songs on the albums where it kind of tells you don't give up, you know, like a confidence booster type song. I love that. Keep going. You know, don't waste your time. So I love that. I love the, the message in this song. It was on my list of favorites because of the message. Now we're on to, we got two more songs y'all, which is Bouncing Part Two. I so happen to like this version better than the other one. When the album came out, a lot of people on my timeline were saying that they didn't like this version. But I actually like this version more than I like the other one. Um, this version is very sexy and sensual to me. I'm just like, oh, you know, I just, I love it. <laughs> I like the slowed down version and it kind of took me back to the 90s. Artists, when they would put out, they would have like two versions to a song. One version would be more up-tempo, the other one would be a little bit more slowed down. The other one is cool too, but 
I really love this one though. It's almost kind of like you're listening to a different, a total different song. And I love her harmonizing in the background. The next one we have is, it's a rap featuring Quiet Chow and Kukze. Uh, Kudze, I don't know how to pronounce it. This song is also a vibey song. It's not. It's also another song that's not my favorite. Um, the lyrics, of course, just like I, I keep telling y'all, like even if you don't like the song, get into the lyrics and just get into it. You know what I'm saying? Um, thing how it's a rap, you canceled, ain't no coming back. Sometimes you got to do that to people. Like everybody came through lyrically, um, so it was it was a great mashup but um i don't know i just wasn't really connected with it like i was with the other songs but other than that i feel like lyrically everybody did what they needed to do so shout out to quiet child and the kudze or kudze i believe that's how you say it all right so that was the last song i hope you guys liked the video thank you guys for watching i hope you guys like comment and subscribe all of that good stuff and let me know what you like about the album what is your favorite i will see you guys in the next one Peace. Wow.